How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be trying to get a four-stroke Craftsman trimmer back up and running again. So let's get right into it. So I have a Craftsman trimmer here. This is a four cycle, so it's a four stroke engine. You just put straight gas in it. The engine is made by Briggs and Stratton. There's your model and type number right there. It's a 34 cc and there's the model number for the trimmer itself. A little backstory on this trimmer first though. My customer that brought it to me said he purchased it a few years ago and he's only used it for about five hours. He says that every fall time he runs it dry and this spring when he went to start it, it just wouldn't start. Now when we're looking at the machine here, you're going to notice that it has some new fuel lines. So I've already been working on this and I've gotten to the point where I'm at now where I'm going to be working on it a little bit further. Now before I put any time or money into a trimmer or weed eater, whether it's four stroke or two stroke, there's going to be a couple things that I do to kind of test to see whether or not the machine is worth it. Now, like I said, I've already worked on this machine a little bit, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to redo everything that I've done already. Now, the first thing you wanna do before putting any time or money into a machine is you're gonna come up to the spark plug cap. We're gonna take that off and we're gonna test this for spark. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the kill switch is in the on position. And I just have my inline spark tester plugged in here. So this one's a light up version. It's got a little bulb in there. So when I go ahead and pull on the pull start cord, this light should light up if the coil is producing spark. So you guys can see we have all kinds of spark. So now that we know that the coil is producing spark, the next thing I'm gonna do is test for compression, just using my cheap little compression tester kit here. So I'm just gonna pull the pull start cord a couple times and we're gonna see how much compression this cylinder is making. We can see that we're making 80 PSI here. It's just starting to get into the red, which isn't that great but we're gonna to try to see if we can get it to start. One of the main reasons why you wanna check compression is because on a lot of these trimmers or chainsaws, sometimes due to vibration, the head bolts could get loose. So you could end up having a clean carburetor and lots of spark, but if there's a head gasket leak because of loose head bolts, then you're not pulling in the proper amount of fuel and you won't get the combustion you need to start the engine. Now this is a four stroke, so it does have a cam and this engine may have an automatic compression release, which could be releasing a little bit of compression on the compression stroke so that it makes pull starting it easier, which can sometimes fool a compression test. But we know that we have at least a minimum of 80 PSI. So at this point, the next thing I'm gonna do is reinstall the spark plug and I'm going to pop off the air filter cap here. We're gonna shoot a little bit of carb cleaner in there we're gonna pull it and see if it fires up and then shuts off. Now, just like any four stroke engine, this engine does require straight fuel and bottom end oil. So the oil cap is right down there and it says check oil level before starting. So obviously I have checked to make sure there's oil in it, which means we can go ahead and try to fire it up. So with the choke in the open position, I'm just gonna take a little bit of gum out carb cleaner here and we're gonna spray it into the cylinder through the carburetor. You shouldn't need much. Once again, the shutoff switch is in the on position. Put the choke on. There we go. So it fired up and then it shut off. So that lets me know that there is enough compression inside of that engine to allow for the combustion process to take place. And it basically just died out because it's not getting fuel. So now you're pretty much caught up to the point where I'm at now. Going back to the fuel lines though, you're gonna notice that once again, those have been replaced. So because I did those steps and got the same results that I just did now on video, basically I figured it could just be a fuel supply issue. So I went ahead and removed that plastic piece on the back of the engine there. And I went ahead and replaced the main fuel line and the return line. And I put some fresh fuel inside of the fuel tank with a brand new fuel filter. I went ahead and primed it and pulled it over a few times. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get this thing to fire up unless I sprayed carb cleaner directly into the carburetor. Now I tried putting another spark plug in it and that obviously did nothing. So it's not a case of a fouled plug or anything. We cleaned the plug, we replaced it and had the same start and then shut down issue. So again, just a fuel supply issue. So what I did was I called up my customer and I gave him two different quotes. I gave him a quote on what would be me removing and 
cleaning, rebuilding the OEM factory carburetor right there. And I also gave him a quote on if I just went ahead and replaced the carburetor with a brand new one. So my customer got back to me and said, you know, I don't even want to spend $80 on this thing. I would rather go and buy a brand new one. And in fact, he was looking at purchasing an electric one, which believe it or not is what we use. So even though I'm a small engine mechanic and I fix these things all the time, you would figure that I'd be able to fix my own we don't use two stroke or four stroke trimmers. We bought a black and decker electric one. You depress the button and away you go. You can go ahead and trim your whole yard and that 20 volt battery will last you pretty much for the average household. You can even purchase a 40 volt one. It's a little bit bigger, a little beefier and has a lot more power than the 20 volt one. But for the average household, a 20 volt cordless trimmer works great. So getting to the point where I'm at now, he said, you can go ahead and just keep the thing. So. Because I knew that we had spark and we had enough compression to get it to start and then stop, I figured that for the cost, I would go ahead and put some money into it because this is a four stroke. These are known to be quite robust and they do put out a lot of torque at lower RPM and they're great for landscaping companies or anyone that lives in a rural area. Maybe you got to do a ditch or something or maybe by a pond where there's uh, some thick bulrushes. This thing will cut through just about anything. So I figured just for a sake of a video, why not go ahead and put a little bit of money into this thing and see if we can get it running again. Unfortunately, I couldn't find an aftermarket carburetor for uh, this model of engine. You can only buy this carburetor from Briggs & Stratton, the manufacturer of the engine. And that carburetor cost me $98 as a distributor. And the list price was about 115 and that's Canadian. Also, apologies if you hear the fan running in the background, but it's pretty hot out here, so I have it running at full speed. So like I said, I went ahead and ordered a spark plug. You guys can see I got it opened up there. So the OEM spark plug was a Briggs & Stratton 790-885. And uh, like I said, I put that in and it didn't change anything. So once my customer said, you know, go ahead and keep this thing, I said, okay, I might as well put some money into it. So I went ahead and ordered a brand new carburetor. This is an OEM Briggs & Stratton 696-949. And I also went ahead and ordered an air filter, which is going to be a 696-923. So now I have new fuel lines, new fuel filter. I'll have a new spark plug, a new carburetor, and a new air filter as well. So this thing should fire up and run once I'm done with it. And my customer was also nice enough to give me some extra uh, hassle-free three OEM Craftsman cord, I guess. And uh, these came with it when he bought it. They're listed at uh, $6.99 a pack here. So that's over $14 just in string. And you know, he said, go ahead and keep that as well. So at this point, it's uh, pretty straightforward. There's going to be what I believe are two eight millimeter nuts right there. We're going to remove them and uh, we'll go ahead and start ripping this thing apart. So with the two eight millimeter nuts removed now, we can go ahead and remove the outer plastic cover here. You guys are gonna see there's gonna be a vacuum tube that goes to that little red grommet there on the airbox backing plate. So we're just gonna put that off to the side. And we have our throttle cable, which comes down from the bottom here. So what we're gonna do to remove that is engage our throttle directly at the carburetor, and then that will put slack on the line and you guys can see it should just pop out just like that. So the fuel lines have now been popped off and you guys can see just like that how simple it is to remove one of these carburetors off of pretty much any weed trimmer. Some of the stills I worked on are a little bit more complex. Sometimes you need to remove a little bit more, but for the most part, there's just gonna be two nuts holding on the carburetor. There's gonna be a throttle cable and there's going to be a fuel line and a return line. You disconnect all that and the carb comes right off, which is why I'm now recommending to my customers that they simply just do some R and R, which is remove and replace. So I can go ahead and pop off the old carburetor, put the new one on some fresh fuel and get the thing out the door in maybe 15 to 20 minutes instead of spending what could be possibly hours cleaning, rebuilding and trying to fine tune a rebuilt carburetor. We'll go ahead here and remove the spark plug and this one takes an NGK BPMR6F spark plug here. And the OEM Briggs 790885 spark plug is also an NGK BPMR6F plug. Now, I also wanted to point out that there are no adjustments on the OEM factory carburetor here. The only thing you can do is adjust that screw and that's gonna set your idle and that's pretty much it. Now, the 
OEM number on this carb is going to be a Walbro, and then the other number is going to be up here. It's a 142A carburetor. So it's a Walbro 142A. Now I typed that into Amazon, eBay, and like I said, I just couldn't find an aftermarket replacement for this carburetor. So I'm just editing my video here, and I just wanted to note that while I couldn't find an aftermarket replacement for the 696949 Briggs & Stratton OEM carburetor, I was able to find this carburetor here on Amazon.ca just by typing in four-stroke trimmer carburetor. Now, like I said, it's not going to be a direct replacement to the OEM Craftsman one because this one says that it's actually made for a Troy built or a Yardman. Also fits a Ryobi 650R. Now, I did Google the Troy built TB490BC and the owner's manual there says it is a four cycle trimmer. So this carburetor should work for the Craftsman with the 34cc Briggs and Stratton engine. But for $57 on sale for $37, I figure I might pick one up. The size looks the same, the throttle hookup looks the same, and if you'll notice here, it has an air fuel mixture screw, which means this carburetor is going to be adjustable. So it will give you a little bit of adjustability if the engine isn't running as well as it should be. Again, everything looks to be the same and it looks like it would bolt right up. So like I said, for $37, I think I might end up picking one up just to have it in stock so that the next time I get one of these Craftsman trimmers in, I'll be able to try it out. So again, guys, I'm not too sure if this carburetor would work, but for $37 compared to $98, it's worth a shot. And worst case scenario, if this carburetor ended up not working out, you'd be able to ship it back to Amazon and you'd get a refund hassle-free and you wouldn't be out any money. So here is the brand new carburetor. And I find this interesting, but the carburetor comes with an O-ring already on it. And inside of the box, they give you a brand new gasket for in between the carburetor and the engine. So that's gonna be that one right there. But they also give you an extra O-ring. Maybe they just give you a spare. So with the old gasket removed, what I'm gonna do now is just take my Torx screwdriver and I'm going to go up to this little intake manifold here. So the carb bolts to this and there's going to be two Torx screws. So I'm just gonna go ahead with my Torx screwdriver and just make sure that those are tight, which I can feel that they are. So I'm gonna go ahead and install my new gasket here. And we'll put that on the same way that it came off with that little hole to the right side there. So with the new gasket installed, we'll go ahead and pull out our throttle cable there, push the carburetor back, and then we're just gonna line up the little hole and we're going to rotate down the butterfly valve so that I can get the throttle cable hooked into position. And a little trick when removing fuel lines, uh, before you go ahead and pop them off, I would recommend at least taking a picture so you kind of remember which fuel line goes where. But if you're ever not sure of which fuel line goes where, you can go ahead and remove your gas cap. And then obviously if you have the tank empty, you're gonna go ahead and blow into one of the lines and you're gonna try to get air coming out of the long tube with the fuel filter on it. Once you identify which one has air coming out of the fuel filter, then that's going to be your intake fuel line. And then the other one is going to be the much shorter return line. Then you can come to your carburetor here and depress on the primer bulb here. And what you're gonna do is you're going to feel for pressure on one of the fuel line holes there. And then you're going to feel for some suction on another. And I'll try to get a shot here. So I'm depressing my finger against that uh, brass one as the plastic one is up on top you're gonna notice that uh, it won't release unless I pull my finger off of this one. So what we can tell here is that uh, this is our intake and that's going to be our return because this one is going to have the suction. You can see my finger is a little deformed there. And then that one is going to be the return line. So as you press your primer bulb, it's going to bring fuel in here through the carburetor and then it's going to push it back down and return it into the tank below. So now that I've identified which fuel line goes where, uh, when I, installed new fuel lines, I always like to leave a little bit of extra length. So what I did was I cut the fuel lines off because they were already connected to the previous old carburetor. So I cut them off and then I pushed them on and that just makes a little tighter connection. So again, a little bit extra fuel line. If you ever have to remove them, you can always kind of mess up your fitting and then cut it off and you always have a little bit of extra to redo that. Um, so now that the carb is installed, we'll go ahead and install our little airbox backing plate here. 
I've gone ahead and hooked up the little vacuum tube there. I'm assuming that's the crankcase vent. And now that that's secured in place, I can go ahead and wrap my new air filter around there. Now, the reason that I replace an air filter, even though my customer said it was low hours, was this one you guys can see is deteriorating ever so slightly. However, it was covered in quite a bit of oil originally, and I squeezed it out using a paper towel. You can see there's still quite a bit of oily residue left onto it. Now, the reason for that is sometimes, well, a lot of times actually on these four strokes, is people overfill these. And again, I believe they're only supposed to take three ounces. So I'm gonna look that spec up shortly. But what happens is that people put a little too much oil in them. And then if we remember that crankcase breather tube right there, so you can see it has a one-way flap valve on it right there. So that's going to allow for positive crankcase pressure to go into the intake, but not go back into the engine. So what happens is if you overfill these with oil, there's going to be a lot more oil vapor coming into your air box, which is going to coat your air air filter and then all of that debris is going to go into your carburetor. So going back to why do I replace the air filter, it's the same reason why I do a fuel filter, it's the same reason why I use my own fresh fuel and basically that's just to protect the new carburetor. So whether I clean an old carburetor and rebuild it or I replace one, I want to make sure that what I'm putting through that carburetor is clean and I'm also going to be eliminating issues. So if I did all the work to this, but I reused my customer's fuel, well, the customer's fuel could be a couple years old. He says that it's fresh. Maybe he had two different jerry cans sitting side by side and grabbed the old one instead of the new one. It could happen. So again, cover all your bases and you shouldn't have a problem. So with the unit flipped on its side, we're gonna go ahead and take just a standard flathead screwdriver and we're going to open up the oil plug cap here. We'll get that loose so that we can go ahead and remove that. And that's going to have a dipstick on it. Like I said, I did check this thing for oil. So there is oil on there, but I'm gonna go ahead and change it anyways, just to make sure that there is the proper amount in the engine. So I have a little cooking tray here on the ground and I'm just going to go ahead and quickly flip that on its side and drain the oil out of there. It might make a little bit of a mess, but it's nothing we can't wipe up with a paper towel. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all that old oil out of there and we'll get some fresh 10W30 in. So what you wanna do is go down to the model number of the engine, not the actual machine, which is down there. I showed you that before. So what I did to find the spec was, like I said, I just went to Google, I typed in the model number and I put Briggs oil capacity after it and I found an online user manual. And then going into the maintenance section under oil, you can see that it says this engine takes approximately three ounces of oil, which is 90 milliliters. And they recommend only adding one ounce at a time, keeping the oil fill hole at a level position so that you can regularly check your dipstick to make sure that it's the proper amount. I'll be using some Quaker State 10W30 and I just filled up a little bottle here. You guys can see that it's at about 100 milliliters right now. So I'm going to drain just a little bit out of it and we'll start putting some of that in. Now 90 milliliters is not a lot of oil guys so i'm just using a small funnel here and i will stop and we'll check it with the dipstick with the front end lifted up to get that to the level position so with the trimmer sitting in a level position now and we're going to be checking the oil level with the dipstick threaded in because that's what it says and i've gone ahead and just cleaned off the end there because it's fresh oil and it's always hard to see on these light gray dipsticks so you're going to want to seat that all the way down and then We'll go ahead and unthread this and bring it over to our clean shop towel that I got laying down there. Now this may be difficult to see, I'm trying to get the light to shine on it, but the dipstick is wet up until about that point there. So the full mark would be right at the top. So we're good, right on the money. And like I said, I measured out about 90 milliliters, which should be exactly three ounces. So I'll get the dipstick back in, I'll put some fresh fuel in it, and we'll try to fire it up. Now, once again, this engine is a four stroke, so I've gone ahead and used some 91 octane ethanol free fuel. So I'm gonna bring this thing outside and we're gonna try to fire it up. If it runs a little wonky, well, there's not gonna be much that I can do other than an idle adjustment. Like I said, that carburetor offers zero adjustability. So is this thing gonna run or did I just waste about $111 in parts and about a half an hour in labor? Let's find out. So let's see if we can get this thing fired up. Kill switch is in the on position. 
we're going to give this thing a few primes until fuel starts coming through. That should be good. Choke is in the on position. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the throttle a little bit. A little bit of grinding in the recoil. There could be something loose inside there. But that makes me happy. This thing idles pretty good. A little hesitation. Let's see if we can get it warmed up. Now that it's warmed up, it's running a little bit better. I might have to turn the idle down a little bit. These do run off of a centrifugal clutch and the trimmer head is turning slightly, which would indicate that the centrifugal clutch is engaging. Well, this thing runs awesome now. I just had to let it warm up. You know, this thing hasn't run since last year sometime. When I first started it up, I noticed that there was a noise coming from the recoil. So as the crankshaft spun around, it sounded like there's a loose piece of plastic in there. So what I'll probably end up doing is pulling this off, take the shaft out, separate the engine from the rest of the unit, and then I can go in and have a look it could be a small piece of plastic in there or something from the recoil housing that uh, maybe just broke off kind of gets ground up in there maybe i don't know we'll have to see well i'm pretty happy with those results guys once this thing warms up it runs awesome there was a little bit of hesitation at the beginning but uh, again that was just because it was cold so once this thing heated up you get on the trigger and this thing winds right out there's no sputtering there's no bogging down this thing runs awesome so I took a chance on it. Like I said, you know, my customer didn't want to spend any money on it. And I went and purchased these parts at my cost, not to mention the fuel line, the fuel and the oil. Let's say I got $115 into this thing. That's not that bad. If I'm going to sell it, I'm going to try to get some money out of it. So I might sell this thing for, I don't know, $175 if I can get that. These things are quite expensive brand new because they are four strokes. They do make way more torque than the two stroke variants. I also have two packs of extra cord priced at about $14. So I figured at $165 or $175, somebody would be getting a good deal for this. I ended up getting a good video out of it and somebody ends up getting a quality machine. And obviously, like I said, I will end up pulling that off and spending the time just to see what the heck is under there. We know that the recoil works because every time I pull it, it turns over the engine. So it's just a case of something loose inside of there, or like I said, a piece of debris, maybe a chunk of a stick or something got caught up in there. But whatever the case may be, I'll take a look at that and fix that up before I post this thing for sale. But that's gonna wrap up today's video on this 34cc Briggs & Stratton powered Craftsman weed trimmer. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up, you know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content, and as always guys, Thanks for watching.